one of Pakatan Harapan's promises in its election manifesto is to allow PTPTN to go easy on PTPTN loan defaulters. It's a promise that will put the country into a 40 billion ringgit debt, projected to rise to 76 billion by 2040. For perspective, 1MDB's debts stand at 38 billion. But hey, they promised, right? Right? These promises include deferring loan repayments until the graduate can earn 4,000 ringgit a month and lifting their travel bans. Well, since the elections, there's been a bit of a reality check, with the PTPTN chairman saying that these promises were made when they didn't know of the country's true financial situation. Hmm. But the somewhat good news is that PTPTN has taken responsibility. They've organised a series of town halls to gather opinions on how to best manage this debt. They've compiled some of the suggestions put forward during these town halls on PTPTN's website. Even though no decision has been made yet, critics have been quick to call them out for breaking their election promises. In fact, the mere suggestion of reinstating travel bans for loan defaulters drew some pretty strong language. Unfortunately, travel bans have proven to be the most effective way for PTPTN to get its money back. Two-thirds of defaulters started to make repayments in response to this ban. So, is this a promise that the government should keep? What do the numbers tell us? I think one of the key challenges faced by the fund is that it is currently borrowing at the rate of 5% interest rate from the banks and then lending out to students at the rate of 1%. So, there is already a 4% shortfall in terms of subsidy that the PTPTN Corporation would need to subsidise each borrower. Because the PTPTN is a statutory body set up by the government, this is the so-called implicit guarantee for all government-owned corporations that has given the comfort for banks to continue lending to PTPTN without any concerns over its ability to repay. That's why that incurred by PTPTN has continued to balloon over the years. Okay. Let's just get the money back so PTPTN can give out more cheap loans for students in the future. In fact, PTPTN has already announced plans to increase the amount of loans offered by over a third within 20 years. Which sounds great, except we might just end up with more of the same problems we now have. If there's easy access to loans, then of course the university's providers will not be under pressure to lower the prices to compete for students because they know that students have access to the loans and they can use that loans as a benchmark for their pricing. You see. So there is no competition or no pressure in fact to lower the prices of their programs. A large body of research about student loans in the US actually corroborates this. Availability of student loans lead to higher prices of tertiary education. For example, this 2015 study found that every dollar of subsidised student loans increases tuition fees by 58 cents. We have not found similar research for the Malaysian context, but tertiary education in Malaysia is known to be on the rise. Although there is no direct evidence, but what we can deduce here is that as long as the students are able to have access to loans, we will likely see a strong relationship between the amount they need to borrow and the fees that are set by the universities. So there, there should be a close correlation in the sense that the loans normally they apply will be directly related to the level of fees set by the universities. Now, here's the kicker. Even though only 37% of loans are for students of private higher education institutions, they account for 51% of the amount of loans. It's a cycle. Easy loans leads to higher private tertiary education prices, leads to more student debts. Students often cannot repay these large debts because there is a mismatch between job opportunities and graduates in Malaysia. We explained this in last year's episode about youth unemployment. But is our country really short of jobs? Not really. Just last year, it was said that Malaysia is expected to offer 1.5 million new jobs by 2020. 60% of them are technical and vocational education and training, or TVET-based. A report by JPKM states that 96.7% of the 2017 vocational college cohorts are employed. A lot of them don't realise that technical vocational education and training is actually booming as a sector um, and there's high demand for graduates in the TVET space because their courses are very much tailor-made to what um, the industry wants and what the industry is looking out for. It's been reported that advanced countries like Germany have almost 60% of tertiary students enrolled in TVET courses. Finland has around 40% and by comparison, Malaysia only has 28%. I think um, Malaysia as a country should be looking at scaling up the number of TVET graduates. So one possible way to look at it would be to encourage PTPTN or other education funders to provide more funding 
for technical vocational education and training. Experts have also called for greater support for online learning, which is usually significantly cheaper than conventional studies, resulting in lesser debts. None of this necessarily means that we should scrap PTPTN. We just need to think beyond merely recouping its debts and come up with solutions to fix the entire system. I don't think PTPTN should be reducing the number of loans that they are giving because fundamentally, uh, education is a tool that will enable upwards mobility. What PTPTN can do is they could prioritise um, the kind of areas which, in which they give their loans and also look at the technical and vocational space. As it is in Malaysia, TVT education is not as expensive as traditional academic pathways. They'll have to look at courses in which students who are graduating are getting jobs and that there are jobs that are available. So for the future, I think what PTPTN can start looking at is higher education as a whole. Higher education is changing and evolving. Look at um, online education and the unbundling of degrees where instead of doing three to four years, a student may do one year, go to work, come back, continue with the second year and do something of that sort. Unbundling which enables someone to complement the theory as well as the practical aspect through greater industry involvement. And I think that also creates, in the long run, a more sustainable um, PDPTN. Although we should find ways to clear our existing debt, it's not just about looking at the problem at present. We have to look beyond and come up with solutions to make sure it doesn't ever happen again. And that means looking at the PDPTN and education system as a whole, because these debts affect all of us as a nation.